Starting it off in the number five spot of the best gaming mice for competitive FPS is the Extrify M4. Coming in at a price tag of only 65 bucks. If you want to check out any of the five mice in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But even though the Extrify M4 is, well, kind of budget, it's still one of the best out there. Now, the Extrify M4 uses the 3389 sensor, which is a very great, widely used high-end sensor. Now I will say and note for the testing process of all the five mice on this list, every single one of these mice and all of the mice that I even included in the testing process are all used by high level competitive gamers, professional gamers. So all of these are used competitively, meaning that if any of you got these mouse, you could legitimately go to competitive professional gaming events and use these mice as well, Others do, and they win all the time. All right, so the 3389, super widely used, no issues there, great for fast-paced FPS gaming. This hits a 1,000 hertz pulling rate, up to 16,000 DPI, 400 IPS, and up to 50 Gs of acceleration. The overall build quality here is very good, except for a small amount of creaking on the right side where your pinky would kind of rest. Now this is a more ergo right-handed mouse, and while I know that a lot of people like this mouse shape, I never really fell in love with it during gameplay, although there are plenty of programmers that use this mouse. This has circle cutouts basically everywhere on it, and in hand it actually feels quite nice. And the first time that I actually put my hand on this mouse and started gaming with it, I really, really liked it. However, it just never fit as well as, well, some of the others on the list. However, I can see why a lot of people really, really love the shape of this mouse. Now the color options here are actually really, really cool. You have a choice between teal, pink, gray with red accents, and then just a white. I think it's really cool that they added those kind of more colors. I know Logitech sometimes does that, but more gaming mice need to have more than just black and white, so I like that. The skates here are 100% PTFE or virgin gray PTFE. There are four skates in each corner, which typically I don't like as much. However, the glide is smooth with a teeny amount of dragging in some directions, which is honestly surprising how little drag this has due to the placement and size of the skates, as this is typically not the best in my experience. So yeah, the gliding is actually really good. Now this is wired with an ultralight cable design. With this being my only real con with this mouse. Now, even though this is an ultralight cable and basically everyone in the industry does ultralight cables very, very well and very similarly to each other. This one, even though the wrapping is loose as all ultralight cable wrappings are, the wire inside is fairly stiff still. So I did get some pulling. If you do not have a mouse bungee, you will need to get one for this. You will need to have a lot of slack or figure out some way to keep a lot of slack on this cable because it does pull, which is really my only problem here. Now, is this a deal breaker? No, it is kind of nitpicky as well. A lot of professional gamers use it, so it must not be that big of an issue, but it is definitely something to consider before buying. Now for the switches, these use Omron switches. They aren't super light, but they are super heavy. They're kind of right there in the middle. And I think it's a really good middle ground. The scroll wheel here is a little mushy feeling. It has tactile bumps, but doesn't feel super precise. Now for the weight, this comes in at 69 grams without the cable. Now RGB, this still does have it, which is really nice. It's very bright, it's vibrant, it looks really pretty, and I like that they added it to this in addition to adding all those different colors. As for extras in the box, you have two mechanical keyboard keycaps that are OEM profile, one of them says Extrify, one of them says GG, like good game. Uh, it's cool that they added that. I actually really like that, it's a nice touch. And then you also get a second replacement set of skates, which is great. But with that, let's move on to the number four spot, which is the Endgame Gear X1. Coming in at a price tag of $69.99. This again uses that 3389 sensor, which is very widely used. This is a 1000 Hertz pulling rate up to 16,000 DPI, 450 IPS and 50 Gs of acceleration. Build quality here is solid, no creaking. Everything feels well put together. I got the smoky black glossy version and I was surprised at how enjoyable it was to use due to the grippiness of the glossy surface. Something I honestly like wasn't expecting. I was kind of expecting to hate it, um, however, I really liked it. It was definitely a pro. Now the shape here is an ambi design and it has kind of that similar egg shaped style as the G305, the Logitech G305. And as a palm grip user, this felt great, but obviously this design, you can basically do any grip and it's gonna be really, really good for this shape. As for color options, they're very unique as obviously you see with this uh, smoky black clear version. So for color options, you have dark reflex, which is what I got. 
Dark Frost, which is a non-glossy version of basically the one that I have, so that it's not as like that grippiness, it's more like a traditional feeling mouse, but still kind of translucent. Then you get black and white, and I mean, obviously you can go for black or white, but I really like the glossy. I think it's an eye catcher. I think it's really unique. I think it's different. And well, I like the grippiness of it, although maybe I'm weird. Now for the skates, these are PTFE, but they are not 100% PTFE. Now because of this, the drag is actually better on this than the previous mouse. This is due to the design of only having one large skate on the top and one large skate on the bottom, but the glide itself causes more friction than, well, 100% PTFE. So it doesn't drag, but there is more friction if that makes sense. So it's a slower glide, but a no drag glide. Now for our connection, this is wired with an ultralight cable. And I will say here, no problems with the ultralight cable design. Uh, the Extrify was kind of a black sheep there, but get yourself a bungee, not gonna be a problem. But this one, no problems at all. It basically feels like a wireless mouse. Now for switches, this uses the Kale GM 4.0 switches. They feel really good, really nice click with the finger placement. These are fairly light, not crazy light, but definitely pretty light. And this especially I think is due to the placement of the right and left clicks as the way that they're shaped makes it quite easy to click them, but also be precise. I really like that here. The scroll wheel here is great. It has clear tactile bumps. It doesn't feel mushy at all. And well, when you pair those together, it's great for gaming. Also the tactile bumps have a good distance between them, but not too much. So again, good for switching weapons and a lot of different things like that. As for the weight, this comes in at 70 grams without the cable. So that's pretty much about what the Extrify M4 was. Now the RGB looks really, really cool on the clear variants of this, making this look really vibey and just overall incredibly unique. As for any extras in the box, there are no extras. You get the mouse and that is what you get. With that, let's move on to the number three spot, which is the SteelSeries Aerox 3 wireless coming in at a price tag of $99.99. This uses the True Move Air Sensor, which is a collaboration from SteelSeries and Pixar to make, well, basically a Pixar sensor, but a SteelSeries version. I think this is the 3360 sensor that is then modified, but I might be wrong. Don't quote me on that. In fact, if someone knows the sensor, just comment it below. This has a 1000 Hertz pulling rate up to 18,000 DPI, 400 IPS and 40 Gs of acceleration. Build quality here is really good. I think across the board, one thing that's clear is that this is the most beautiful mouse on the list. I mean, it is, it's really good looking. Okay, so my little complaint here is that the left and the right click have some wiggleness to them. And it just is a little nitpicky thing. It doesn't really perfect performance at all, but well, that's that. Besides that, I really enjoyed gaming on this. This is an ambi design and it's great for pretty much any grip style. It has fantastic balance. And I found myself really enjoying fast whips and a faster play style with a lot of lift offs feeling very effortless due to the shape paired with that weight. And well, obviously the balance for those Fast whips, so nice to game on. This does have kind of a rounded square, sideways square diamond shape. I don't know, there's a lot of different shapes going on here. But basically that's the design for the cutouts. It looks really, really good. It sets itself apart from the massive hexagon honeycomb design cutouts. I mean, this one looks really good maybe the best looking cutouts I've ever seen. Now for color options, it either comes in black or white. Now typically black or white, a little bit of a boringness, but with this mouse, it just looks unbelievably good in both colorways. Possibly my favorite looking mouse ever. It just, it looks so good. For the skates, these are 100% virgin grade PTFE with one large skate on the top and one large skate on the bottom. And for me, this is by far like my favorite type of setup for your skates. It usually creates a really, really good gliding surface. And well, due to this, that's what happens on the Aerox 3. This is the best gliding mouse on the list. It was really, really impressive to me. Zero problems with this. I wouldn't even consider getting any aftermarket skates because these are so good out of the box. As for connectivity, this uses a wireless 2.4 gigahertz USB type C dongle. In addition to that, you can also choose to use it in Bluetooth mode for maybe some like work tasks or school tasks. And then you can also go wired with a USB type C cable. As for battery life here, you're gonna get between 22 and 24 hours of continuous usage with that RGB on set to max brightness, which it looks so good, it's, it's maybe worth it. But with the RGB off, you'll get close to the uh, rating, which is about 80 hours, which is actually really good. But well, that uh, that RGB is really nice, so 
Now you might see, I think it's like 200 hours is what they kind of put out there. That's for Bluetooth. The dongle does take obviously more power. So you're realistically gonna get about 80 hours. So I'm close to that. Now for the switches, these are using Steel Series mechanical switches and these feel pretty good. But yeah, they got a nice click to them. Although they do seem to have a farther throw than some of the other mice on this list. But overall, really enjoyed gaming on this thing for fast paced gaming. I don't know why, but that one, super fast like SMG whips, so nice. Now the scroll wheel here has nice tactile bumps. The only thing I don't like here is that the scroll wheel is actually set pretty far down in the mouse itself, which does make it look a little bit stealthy, but I would prefer it just a little bit higher. As for the weight, this comes in at only 68 grams. Now the RGB, yes, it looks insanely pretty. So freaking good. It's got kind of that RGB around the bottom that also is the RGB that's inside of it that glows it up. It looks stupid good. It's very bright. It's very vibrant. The colors look great. And then pair that with the like hexagon, not hexagon, but square, like diamond shape cutouts, so freaking good. I love it. All right, for extras in the box, you do get an ultra USB type C cable, a USB type C to USB type C dongle extender that you can then plug your dongle in to extend it with that charging cable or dongle extender cable. But with that, let's move on to the number two spot, which I think will be no surprise to anyone is the Logitech G Pro X Superlight. Coming in at a price tag of $159.99. This uses the Hero 25K sensor and well, yes, it is notoriously one of the most widely used gaming mice for professional gamers in the industry. This one, well, it is the most widely used. Now it sets a 1000 Hertz polling rate up to 25,600 DPI. I'm sure everyone's using that DPI. 400 IPS, 40 Gs of acceleration. And the build quality here, it is solid. There's no creaks, there's no rattles. Everything feels incredibly well put together. However, it's very plain and extraordinarily basic, but it works very well. It's about function, over form here. As for the shape, it is ambidextrous, but in hand, it still feels really nice. And it's one of those mice where, at least to me, it doesn't matter if you've never used it before, you can pick it up and immediately start gaming on it like you've known it for years, okay? I don't know why, maybe that's just me, but for an ambidextrous mouse, it feels really good in hand, great shape. And obviously due to the shape, it's pretty much good for any grip style. Also, it's not too crazy big. So basically anyone can use this. Even if you have small hands, medium hands, or large hands, I would say anyone could use this. For color options, you have a choice between black, white, or a magenta colorway. For the skates, it uses 100% virgin gray PTFE with one very large skate on the top, a small skate around the sensor, and then a horseshoe shaped skate around the bottom. Then you can also get a different like dongle storage a circle thing that also puts another skate there. So a lot of skate coverage. Now, while there's not a lot of drag due to the shape or the skates themselves, which makes inconsistent drag depending on the angle. So it doesn't have any of that kind of drag, which we obviously don't like, but due to the sheer surface area of the skates, this glides well, but slower with more control. So if you are expecting to get this and then it just be like shooting everywhere on your desk, not gonna happen. This definitely glides well, but again, because there's more control, there's more friction. I mean, there's more skate area, more friction, baby. Now for connection, this uses a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle, or it can be wired with a micro USB cable. As for the battery life, this gets around 70, which is the claimed battery life. And that's 70 hours, not 70 seconds. Now the switches here are Omron switches. And when paired with the design of the left and right clicks, feel great. Actually my favorite clicks on the list, they just feel so satisfying and very, very like, just like, it just screams precision to me. Now, as you'd expect from Logitech, this is the best scroll wheel on the list. It's got really great tactile bumps. They're at a good distance between each other and there is zero mushy feel. It's also fairly high and raised up, which is just great for gaming. For the weight here, this comes in at 63 grams. Really good weight. Really good balance here. Now, as for extras in the box, you get a micro USB to USB type A dongle extender, a rubber coated micro USB cable for charging, some rubberized grip tape, and an extra magnetic skate for the bottom that adds a little bit more resistance and control 
Um, obviously adding again, like I said, more surface area for them skates. All right, now before we jump into the number one spot, we have an honorable mention, which is the Fantec Aria XD7, coming in at a price tag of $78.80. I absolutely love this mouse. Now, the reason it's in the honorable mention category is because, well, no one really uses this mouse, maybe yet, for professional gaming. No esports gamers actually use this mouse yet. It is fairly new. The way they've even started the testing process for this is only taking gaming mice that are currently widely used by high level pro gamers. But this mouse is still really, really good and one of my favorites. The sensor here uses the 3395 sensor, which is a very high end sensor. Technically, it's actually better than the 3389 sensor. This hits a 1000 Hertz polling rate up to 26,000 DPI, 650 IPS and 50 Gs of acceleration. Build quality here is fantastic with a really awesome shape that I honestly fell in love with. It also has a magnetic shell that you can switch off to a cutout design and then a non-cutout design, which is just cool. The balance, at least in my hand, feels absolutely perfect. The grip is fantastically good for lifting off while not feeling uncomfortable even after long gaming sessions. The skates are great. They're virgin gray PTFE. Connectivity is wireless with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. Switches are the KLGM 8.0 switches, super crispy and nice. The scroll wheel is actually quite good. It's tactile, not quite as good as things from like Razer and Logitech, but still very good. And this only comes in at 60 grams. If you want a wireless mouse that's super, super good, but you're on a little bit of a budget and can't afford these, well, mainstream mice, it's a fantastic option. But with that, let's move on to the number one spot, which is the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro. Coming in at a price tag of $149.99. Well, this is across the board, the best and fastest wireless gaming mouse in the world. This has the Focus Pro 30K sensor, amazingly good. And one thing to mention is this has motion sync, which is really, really good and a clear competitive advantage over, well, basically everyone else in the industry just because of motion sync. This is a 1000 Hertz polling rate in normal form, but you can get Razer's hyper polling wireless dongle, costs like $29.99 which is a little bit steep. <laughs> However, once you do get that, this thing goes up to 4,000 Hertz wirelessly, which I believe is the fastest polling rate you can get in a wireless mouse. That's pretty freaking awesome. This has up to 30,000 DPI, 750 IPS, and up to 70 Gs of acceleration. Build quality here is really, really good. I know everyone's gonna joke about Razer's build quality, but for the V3 Pro, it's really, really good. No creaks, fit and finish is essentially perfect. This is definitely an ergo mouse, and it is also the largest mouse on the list. And overall, it's just a fairly large mouse, but not giant. Palm grips, which is what I use great here. I absolutely love this mouse, super comfortable. Now the interesting thing here is even though this is a large mouse, my girlfriend has very small hands, like pretty small hands, they're pretty small. And she really enjoyed gaming on the Death Adder V3 Pro. In fact, out of all of these mice, that was her favorite to game on. So that's actually pretty interesting there. Now I felt absolutely at home the second I put my hand on it. Liftoffs, a fast paced play style, and the sheer comfort while managing grip during gameplay is, well, it's just perfect. Well, that is at least for my hand, but yeah, just really impressed. This is actually my current daily driver paired with the XD7, the Aria from Fantac. So I really like this mouse a lot. Now the color options here, you have between black and white. And then I obviously, well, in the B-roll, I have the limited edition red faker edition. So that is a limited edition. And the difference there is that the black and white have kind of a grippy texture, while the faker edition is a completely smooth matte finish. But pretty much besides that, and also not giving you as much in the box, the faker edition is basically the same. Now for the skates, this uses 100% PTFE, virgin grade. This has two round small skates on the top, one small skate around the sensor, and then a half moon shape around the bottom. Now there is quite literally zero noticeable drag due to the shape. And this glides basically as smooth as the Aerox 3, but slightly slower and not quite as fast as the Aerox 3. That's not necessarily a bad thing. This is basically the perfect middle ground for a smooth glide while not being ridiculously fast like glass skates. Or if that's your playstyle, that's fine. 
Nothing wrong with that. Now as for connectivity, this is wireless with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle, or this can also be wired with a USB type C cable. Now Razer claims 90 hours of battery life. I'd say in a real life situation, you can actually expect to get between 75 and 80 hours of usage there. However, if you do use the hyper polling, if you get that extra hyper polling dongle that's going to increase to 4,000 hertz polling rate, then you're probably gonna get only around 20 hours, maybe a little bit less, but it does recharge from zero to 100% in like three hours, so that's pretty good. For the switches here, these are using Razer's third gen optical switches, and these are really, really good. My second favorite on the list, and they're very, very close with the Logitech G Pro X Superlight. Now, obviously the switch itself I probably prefer the Razer Gen 3, but the design of the left and right clicks from the G Pro X Superlight just made those Omron 20M switches so nice. But these are a very, very close second. Very satisfying, really easy to click, the perfect weight, everything like that. The scroll wheel here has tactile bumps. It is a bit more vague and lighter than I was actually expecting coming from Razer. That being said, the scroll wheel sits quite a bit higher, similar to the G Pro X Superlight, and I really do like this. As for the weight, this comes in at 63 grams, exactly the same as the G Pro X Superlight while being a bigger mouse. For extras in the box, this has a USB type C to USB type A extender, like dongle, an ultralight USB type C cable, and in the white and black versions, you get grip tape. On the faker edition, which does cost more, you don't get grip tape. Excuse me, <laughs> but yeah. Again, if you wanna check out any of the five mice in this video, there's Amazon link below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. I'll also have the honorable mention down below, but wow, all of these mouse, you really cannot go wrong with them. Professional gamers use all of these as their mains and they win championships every day. So if you wanna go competitive, if you wanna up your game and just have a very luxurious competitive gaming mouse, well, you are the five best. Oh, and a small note is that there's going to be a many mice on this list that you're gonna say, well, why isn't the Zowie on there? Why isn't the final mouse on there? Well, I only included mice you can legitimately actually get. A lot of those mice you cannot get because of supply chain issues or literally just you can't buy them because they're out of stock most of the time. For those mice, I didn't want to include them. So these are all mice that you can legitimately get every single day for the price that I said. But this is a consumer tech review and I'll see you guys in the next video.